Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Jewels. So, before we get into the game, I just want to apologise for the last video that I put out. Uh, for those who didn't read the comment that I pinned um, shortly after releasing it and finding out how terrible I was playing, I was really exhausted, in all honesty. So, it may not have come across as that, but I was running on about less, just slightly less than six hours sleep after a very long day of work, so... Yeah, I wasn't in the best position to avoid very obvious uh, lethal amounts that I probably would not miss if I wasn't delirious. So, today we are going to be completely rested, ready to go, and hopefully the quality of the video will be significantly better. I think in the future, if I'm that tired, I'm probably just not going to upload a video because I think it's a lot better for you guys if I just upload a later video. It was already a day late, that was the problem. So, yeah, I think I'll just delay it if I can't upload it because I don't think you guys really enjoyed it as much as I might have hoped and, yeah, I don't like putting out poor quality like that. So, in the future, if a video's late, it's because I'm really tired and I just cannot do it. Anyway, guys, without further ado, let's get into the game, shall we? I'll see you there. Okay, we're in, and we're on the play. We have a very flooded hand, but also a tireless tracker, so you can make good use of the land, and a little bit of removal as well. It's not the best hand, but we could probably draw into something decent. So we'll play a forest, and pass the turn. See what our opponent's doing. They're on a white, but it looks like... Oh... They're choosing not to do something for one mana. It's maybe not White Weenie then, because they would have gone as aggressive as possible if they could. But I'm not sure what it could be. Alright, play Forest and pass the turn. Probably won't play Tireless Tracker next turn, just because I want to get at least a land drop out of him if he dies. But in Mono White, I'm not sure what it could be. An Expedition Envoy comes down though. And I don't plan on blocking that either, so... We will see. Come on, draw something for our third turn that's not Tile Tracker. Druid of the Cow. That works. Okay, play Forest, play a Druid. It's a decent blocker. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh. It's a decent blocker for the Envoy, but somehow I expect Nimbus Wings to be suited up onto it. Which is alright, because Tile Tracker will soon catch up in power to it, and then we can Nature's Way the crap out of it. If it comes to that. If he attacks in, I'm not sure that I block. Yeah, alright. He's just told me he doesn't have pump in his hand, essentially. Nissa's renewal gets us right back on track where we need to be. So, Tyler's tracker. Play a forest, get a trigger. Even if he kills it, we've got a some degree of value out of it. And if he doesn't have pump, we might as well swing in for this one. We're not really using the mana. We could have nature's way it right there, but I'd rather him suit it up with an enchantment first. Or even waste a pump spell killing a druid. So we've kind of passed the point where druid of the cowl is actually useful to us. It's mostly there to ramp us into an explosive vegetation, which we obviously don't have. So we'll see. It does allow us to miss his renewal though next turn. Unsubstantiate. Going for the tracker? That's fine. Maybe we'll hold off on Nissa's Renewal then, just for the extra clues. Because we're not ramping into anything right now, so we might as well get as much value out of it as possible, unless we draw into something here that we want to ramp into. And that's going to be an explosive vegetation. Hmm. We've got six mana in total. So we can tireless tracker, we can crack a clue, we can also get a land to get another clue. Yeah, that seems good to me. Tracker down, forest down, get a clue. We have three mana open, which is not quite enough for the explosive vegetation. And we'll just swing in for one here, I guess. See if he wants to... Uh, Use any destroy target attacking creatures on this druid. 
Alright, we'll pass the turn, sack a clue on his end step. He's actually blue as well. Imprisoned in the moon. On our tireless tracker. Sure. We'll sack a clue. Because we can. Get a counter on it before it gets imprisoned. And a reprisal. Really? You sure about that? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Well, at least we know he's got one, so if we do commit to a big creature, we know it's gone. Sure. <laughs> oh, plane of bridge. Hello, Ulamog. All right. We're going to work our way up to that then. So, we could play it now for the six mana we have. Oh, we could Nissa's Renewal first. Which I think is probably a better idea. It'll in decrease the odds of us drawing into a land next turn. We grab Ulamog or even Gaia's Revenge because it can't be targeted by Reprisal. That our opponent accidentally told us he had. Sweet. And we'll play another Forest. We'll hold this Rogue's Passage in hand. Because he doesn't need to know. And we'll swing in for one. We're at 23. He's only getting two damage per turn and we've got a Ulamog in the next two turns, so... Yeah. We could have also sat the clue there, but... You know. Lone Rider. That's not going to be good enough. The fun thing is, even if he uses Unsubstantiate on Ulamog... Um... Well, he's got to play a land, an island into it after we do that as well. Actually, no, he doesn't because we know it'll get a cast trigger. Never mind. So, we can do Planar Bridge and Explosive Vegetation on this turn. Play Planar Bridge. Play Explosive Vegetation. Grab two lands. Play another forest. This time we'll sack the clue. We're getting low on cards. Also stops our opponent from wanting to get in with the Lone Rider if he doesn't have pump for it. Because with a telling time, dropping his blue mana. Come on, Ulamog. I'm waiting for you. So yeah, next turn it's Ulamog. Turn after that, it's going to be Gaia's Revenge. Turn after that, probably the uh, Uvenwald Hydra. Grab us an extra land. Although that one will get reprised. Or oh, reprisaled. Let's see if he wants to swing in. He does not. Alright. And go to end step. Saka Clue. Draw a card. Not Ulamog, thank Christ for that. We could maybe bait out the reprisal, actually, with Sylvan Advocate. We've got the mana for it. Let's do it. Sylvan Advocate, do you want to do a reprisal on this? Nope. Alright. Cool. And doesn't look like we can explosive vegetation on the same turn. So, search your library for a permanent card and put it into play. Oh, you fool. You fool. I have you now. Alright, let's go with Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Skadoosh. And we can even explosive vegetation. And some lands out of our deck. Play our Rogue's Passage. She's dead in two turns. Unless he has exile for Ulamog. And then he has to deal with Gaia's Revenge. And then he has to deal with Uvenwald Hydra. Declaration in stone. He does have an answer. Alright. Solemn offering. Ah, oh, you. Ah, oh, you. Wow. Wow, he actually does have answers for everything. Alright. He's going to be able to flip his Lone Rider as well, unfortunately. Because he's gained enough life. 
That's a 4-4 trampling, lifelinking first striker, and we have an Oran Reef Hydra so we can take care of it. Alright. So, Oran Reef Hydra. Should probably crack this clue first, actually. See what we get. Another land. Alright. Well, play the forest, get two counters on our Hydra. Nature's way. Take out that Lone Rider. And swing for one. Because we can. Sweet. Damn him and his answers. It's a perfect, perfect goddamn deck. Anointer of Champions. Attacking creatures get plus one, plus one. That is fine. And passes. We get a Nissus Pilgrimage, so we get to pump up our Hydra a little bit more, which is good. And yeah, we get two in hand, one to play, we get to play the other one. So we got an 11-11. Now, if he has a destroy target attacking creature, there's a good way to counter this. We're going to make the Druid unblockable. Trample through with the Hydra. If he makes a sack an attacking creature, we sack the Druid. Going to block. Alright. He's just trying to absorb as much damage as possible. By the looks of it. Yep. Okay, he's down to 11. So he's dead next turn unless he has an answer for the Hydra. And there's green mana. So he's banned all this time. Tamio does help him here. He does get to lock down the Hydra. Yep. Those answers keep on flowing from his deck. Alright. Gave me a Gaia's Revenge. That's <laughs> an explosive vegetation, Jesus Christ. Alright. Uh, let's thin our deck out a bit more then. Maybe we've got just too much ramp in this deck. That's maybe a possibility. Alright. So he's forced to kill his Tamio here if he doesn't find an answer for the Hydra. Just so that he doesn't die on our next turn. That is a land. Does he have an answer for the Hydra? Looks like he doesn't. Okay, so he's going to lock him down for another turn. And a Bruna can get back a Lone Rider. Yeah. Doesn't really save him, though. Because I can make this Hydra unblockable. And we get a Nuvemwald Hydra. Which is a nice reaching creature. A nice 22-22. Which is going to be a 23-23. Once I grab another land. And we already have one Rogue's Passage. So I'll just grab a Forest to uh, pump up our Hydra. Alright. Can't make it hasty, unfortunately. So we pass the turn. Needs a board wipe here. Or he's a goner. Eldritch Evolution on his Lone Rider, so he gets to search for something with five or less mana cost. I believe it is. Ah, he gets Brisella. That's not going to help him, though. We already have everything in place to kill him. Gets him for five, though. If he really wants to do that. Hmm. Yeah, we'll block here. His only card that he could really hurt us with is making a sack a blocking creature. Something like that. And we've just got our Hydra to take care of the rest, so... Yeah, he's dead. And a Nissa's Renewal just for that extra little bit of pump. Continue playing. Grab our forest. And make the Hydra unblockable. Swing for a lot of damage. There we go. The deck is doing its thing. Once we got all the lands out of a deck, we only hit nut draws, which is pretty sweet. 
Our opponent hit a fair few themselves along the way. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I do want to cut down on some of the uh, some of the ramp. Get an extra few creatures in here, perhaps. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next game. All right, we are in. Um, we've got turn two play and a reclamation sage. That's highly dependent on the matchup, and we've got something to ramp into later down the line. Um. Yeah, I think we can take this, because we can use Dust Watch's first ability if it doesn't flip to find some more creatures and maybe put on a bit of early game pressure on our opponent. See what they're playing. White. Into a cliffside lookout. Is this White Weenie? It may very well be. Alright. So, we hit more lands, as is tradition. So we'll play our recruiter down. Decent enough blocker for this guy. So if he does attack in, he's probably got combat tricks. See if he calls our bluff. I don't think we want to... Uh... Ooh, red-white. Interesting. We don't want to run anything into that. Because we kind of want to use Dust Watch's ability. And we're not going to get to do that. Because it flipped. Yes. So we'll play a land. I'll hold on to the Reclamation Sage. This could have vehicles in it. Oh, balls. Missed a bit of uh, damage there, unfortunately. Could have been three damage down. Let's bear that in mind. When I eventually lose, because he's at three health. <laughs> a little too much clicking there. But that means Ulamog's going to cost nine. So, you never know. We might be able to get there in time. Many things our opponent could be doing, mostly playing lands. All right, planes down into an Aros champion. Yeah, you're annoying. Two two with double strike does nothing else, but that gets through our howler quite easily. We get a land, which means we can explosive vegetation, thin out our deck, and stop hitting lands. In theory. In practice, probably not. Well, now we definitely can't attack in. Mr. Opportunity there. But we're at 7 mana next turn. 6 is where we need to be to cast all of our big creatures other than Ulamog and Gaia's Revenge. So if we draw into any of them, we can play them and then follow it up with a land drop if it's maybe an Orin Reef Hydra or anything of that sort. Siege Modification. Oh dear. Well, I think we block here. Prevo uh, prevent half our life total being taken down in one hit. And then we can Reclamation Sage take the modification off. Oops. Take that off. Don't want that anymore. Judging by the fact that he's making vehicles into creatures with the modification, I assume that he's running a few, but we still really do have to run this Reclamation Sage out for that because it's just too much pressure. Let us kill it. Thank you. And I suppose we can hold off on blocking with the Sage for now. Unless, of course, he sticks another enchantment on it and then maybe we want to stop it to buy time. But if we're only drawing into lands, there's not really much we can do in this matchup. Which so far has been exactly what we've been doing for the most part. Evolving Wilds grabs himself a red sauce. Okay. Yeah, looks like he's swinging in. Could get in with that 1-1. One, one. I wouldn't be blocking it. We'll let this go. Hopefully he don't have a ton of pump spells. This will be the last time we leave him unblocked. I'll tell you that much. Alright, so we take 4 here. Down to 16. Solemn Recruit. It's another double striker. Ah, is this mono double strike <laughs> dot deck? It might be. More lands. Actually, we're at, what, seven, eight. We get Ulamog next turn. We can get rid of these two. If we survive that long. Explosive vegetation. 
two more lands. Takes us to nine. Forest takes us to ten. You can cast this Ulamog. So we're going to block the Reclamation Sage on the Solemn Recruit by the looks of it. Just to avoid a bit of damage and then Ulamog's going to come in and exile both of these. Take his pressure off the board. Could have a Declaration in Stone for the Ulamog, but that's pretty much about it in white, I think, that can take care of him. Other than making a sack attacking creatures and things like that. Consulate Dreadnought. That is a 7-11? Yeah, 7-11. And a Siege Modification to turn it into a creature. Which makes it a 10-11. do kind of really like this guy's deck. It's very interesting. So we're taking 10 damage here if we don't block. I don't think so. Hmm. Take four instead. That's an Oran Reef Hydra. So, Ulamog, how's it hanging, bro? What do we want to exile now? Do I think we still want to exile the double strikers. But we can't really block this guy easily enough anymore after that. So I'm kind of tempted to exile the vehicle and the recruit, leaving only a four damage double striker here. Which Oran Reef Hydra can be the one to block next turn while Ulamog gets in for the hits. Then I'll hold my forest to make it a 7 7 as well. Just in case he has a little bit of pump, at least it's a trade. Yeah. So kill the Dreadnought, kill the Recruit. Short of exile here, he's probably not going to attack in. So we have him dead in three turns. Just on exile alone. Do you have an answer for Ulamog? Because he ceaselessly hungers for your deck. Goes to attacks. And skips them. Okay. That kind of makes me worry. Although Pulsar Marasa makes all that worry go away. I was worried about him maybe holding up a second attacking creature, but now that he does that, we can pulse back Ulamog and then next turn exile another two things and continue as if nothing had ever happened. So, let's get in with Ulamog. Exile 20 cards. Oh. Oh, that's, that's arguably much worse. So he lets 10 damage go through. This guy who never gets played. Then exiles Ulamog. Ah, that's horrible. We can actually... Oh no, we can't. I was going to say it's an enchantment. It's not an enchantment. <laughs> Play a forest. Make a 7-7. Seven, seven. If he wants to remove this, then he can... Then we can pulse it back. This will be our alternative win con. Let's see what his deck does. Uh, it's essentially a vehicle deck then. With a lot of other random stuff thrown in. Double striker. Aerial modification. To give this guy... Uh, flying. Which means we're going to have to pulse back the Reclamation Sage to ground it again. Okay. We're going to do this now. Gain six life, get a Reclamation Sage back so we can take the enchantment off of the champion. And go down to ten. Come on. Oh, it's not an answer that we really wanted. So hoping for a Primal Bellow there, which would have won us the game right on the spot. 
unfortunately not the case. All right, let's get in for the attacks. Probably don't see any blocks here. Yeah, he knows we've got this reclamation sage, so he knows these creatures getting grounded. We're gonna play it out. Kill his enchantment. Yes. And Duskwatch with two activations to go find more creatures. As well as another blocker. How much did that cost him? Five. So yeah, if he had another one, he wouldn't be able to pump anything up. Stone Quarry, I was going to say it's not a... He's playing Tatlands. Yeah, it's been a very long time since I've seen this guy being played, so I really did not expect to see that. Hmm. Let's have a look through his exile pile, see what kind of answers he might have. Um, I don't know if he does have any. Stopping us from blocking, I don't think kills us. Chandra certainly doesn't. Okay. I'm going to swing in. I'm guessing no. So if he swings in with a double striker, I think that just pretty much means he's dead. So let's hit top three cards of our library. We hit a Sylvan Advocate. We miss on a Primal Bellow, unfortunately. We weren't going to hit it anyway next turn. Right in the middle. And let's see if we can hit again. We whiff that time. Okay. Which means this draw might be a creature. Or a land. Land helps. Make Oran Reef Hydra a 9 9. So if we get in with that 9 9, he's got 4 8 9. He has to trade 3 creatures off to kill the Hydra. We could maybe go and find. Um, and that's not going to do it, but we'll take it anyway. I was thinking the Ubenwald Hydra to get an extra forest. Which would mean he then has to trade off the Chandra as well, wiping his board clear. And leaving us free to get in with our sages and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So do we swing in with everything here then? Swing in with everything. Let's say that he doesn't want to try and kill our Hydra. Then he blocks blocks and then we've got nine eight seven six getting through so yeah he has to he has to block horribly here so we'll game with everything I'm quite happy to lose the reclamation sage dust watch recruiter bothers me a little but we get one last trigger off of him as well or even two if we don't want to play our advocates out All right, we're going to get our Ulamog back. Well, that works out for me. All right. Let's make sure we get Ulamog. And then kill Chandra. This guy gets to do some double strike damage first up, though. But that's fine. We wipe his board, take him down to zero. We were going to get Ulamog back anyway. And that's game. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video a little bit more than the last one. I really do apologize for the last one. I was too tired to record, really, and I did it anyway, which was stupid. So hopefully this one was a lot better and there was a whole lot of uh, whole lot less misplays, which there may very well have been some here as well, but we won, so I'm a little less bothered about that. Anyway, guys, be sure to like and subscribe for some more Magic Jewels content if you did enjoy it, and be sure to hit the little bell icon right next to the subscription button if you want to be notified when I release new videos. Alright, guys, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.